I don't think you heard anything. I heard through the grapevine. But the initial plan, Kendall Dean, there was talk and plans about Andrews. There's a vote. Right? Over there. And they were going to go there. Suddenly, it's too far a walk. They want to be in the swimming pool. So all that went through. And all the changes they wanted on that building, a big gym, a meeting room, a this room, a that room, he had a long list. And it was at a meeting that they explained everything that they wanted. Michael, you were there when this, this went by. You didn't miss any meeting. And the chief himself brought it forth. And then there was a big about, about now we say, you know, Ray Tony should be the police. But then they got him out. Each was taken the basement down. And they had the whole building. Pure and simple. It was not imagined. And that that's how that transpired. And, and for myself, I, I'm going to go through more of this because a lot of things that went forth, and we started this uh, Miss of Clarity. And was it 2013 when all this started getting underway? Because the meetings were over at, at Kendall Dean's. And different presentations on this. But there was a vote by the school Yep. What specific, uh, Mr. Flaherty, a vote to? May I? I, I, I'd like to hear it. I, I, I'd like the explanation. I've been at all those meetings. Mm -hmm. It was March 25th, 2014. The school committee voted to authorize the use of Kendall Dean for a shared use facility by the municipal and school department staff. The committee voted unanimously, four to zero, upon the recommendation of the superintendent to agree to the use of Kendall Dean as a shared department, town, municipal services, multi-purpose building contingent upon the successful passage and funding of the project as outlined in the specific capital project associated with NSCS and high school. So that vote took place on no, uh, March 25th, 2014. To my knowledge, there was no vote taken by the school committee subsequent to that to undo that. So the standing vote by the school committee of record right. is that they committed to a shared use facility. Um, so <clears throat> then there was a vote on November 3rd, 2014 by the town council on a final version of the the plan that went before the voters. And I just want to point out that that plan um, was more than written words. That plan included blueprints that had the school department occupying the entire second floor. So it wasn't a case where they were relegated to the basement. Um, the way that that was laid out was they had the entire second floor. Final, final word is that I appreciate that the police department um, wanted something differently, but they were confined by the vote just like everybody else was. The vote was of the voter. The, the vote was taken by the voters of the town. They set the budget. You can't just move the goalposts after a vote has authorized a bond. And it wasn't like the, like the police department didn't have a seat at that table. They very much had a seat at the table in crafting the space needs plan. So I understand the time passes. Old people shift out, new people come in, I get that, but you don't restart the space needs analysis to ask people, well, what do you want after the vote has been taken? Can I, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So I did some research because I was not on the council when the PBIC was removed. And it's almost impossible to find information from the PBIC. I called the Secretary of State and I cannot find a lot of things. But in the minutes from, or the agenda of October 22nd, 2016, um, there was a lot of back and forth between, I, I don't know who everybody is, Dan, Patrick, Joe, Roseanne, 
Um, so it was after the bids came in too high, um, they wanted to know what Eric would do to further reduce the scope. It went on, and at some point, which I believe you are the John they're discussing, asked if they, the board, were willing to ask the council for surplus to keep the building projects at full scope. Jason brings up the limited life of Bushy School and that we should not count on possible surplus monies putting into a building that has a possible 10-year lifespan. So you knew then, the PBIC, that it was only 10 years? I don't know if it was, if it was, I don't think it was necessarily identified as 10 years. Um, uh, but there was agreement, by the way, by, by two previous architects that that building warranted some updates to extend its life. Nobody thought that that building was going to be around for 40 more years. But okay. we knew that we didn't have the resources to completely rebuild the entire new public safety complex. At the same time that we were still paying off bonds for this building, and that we were going to be paying off bonds for um, the, the 12 million that was floated. All right, because it says Dan states that the bones of Bushy School are not good. There is a problem with the brick face of the building if it is cleaned up and repaired. That may, that may have been said in the context of um, of recommending against doing a full blown renovation, um, and and saying we don't want to do a full. We don't want to make Bushy School a 40 year building. We want to be able to buy some time. Until the, town, until the town was in a position to afford building a new public safety mm -hmm. complex. Okay, because then you asked why not, why no one talked about the usefulness of Bushy earlier, but Dan states that Eric did not want to hear it and no feasibility study was performed. I Dan Juber was just for, just for clarification. Yeah. Dan, Dan, Dan did talk about is Dan Juber who was hired by the town to be the only project manager. Okay, so it's in this agenda from the PBIC of 10-22-2016, or minutes, um, that most of the committee knew that the Bushy School, and at one point, I mean, they were asking, should we just take care of Kendall Dean and whatever is left, go to the Bushy School? So that's where we're at now. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's accurate. I don't think that's accurate. It was always the understanding that Kendall Dean was going to be the building that became a 40-year building, and the Bushy School was going to have its life extended. Uh, Dan read the bids for all three 
were considered the lowest bid was tracked with a base bid of 5.183 and with ad alternates becomes just on the $5,998,900, basically $6 million. We had $4.4 million available, so they were already over, overbid. Uh, the original bond was for $5.2 million. Uh, Jason, that's Jason Pommel, I believe, that was the uh, finance director at the time. Uh, Jason stated there is now only $4.4 million available. Jason stated that the bid is approximately 40% over budget. Uh, Dan did an estimate and gave it, gave it to Paula, uh, to Paula Hamilton, the town administrator at the time. Uh, the day before he signed his contract, he stated the project, this is their project manager, he stated the project cost $6.1 million and the bond was only for $5.2 million. Uh, Joe states that Eric did not design a project. Who would be Joe? That would be Joe uh, Cannell. Would be Joe Cannell. Joe states that Eric did not design a project that was within our budget. Why was the project 40% over budget? RGB said before the bond was approved, you need $17 million to do what you want to do. The bond was cut down. And this goes back to the, the that bond, the, the root of all evil on this project is the bond itself. It was insufficient. John, I assume that's John Flaherty, who's here tonight, would like to know why the architect is not present at the meeting. He's also uncomfortable with the architect's performance being called into question without him being present. Roseanne wanted to discuss matters before the meeting with Eric, I guess that's Eric Army, the studio major. Uh, Roseanne wants to give police their input into what is specifically needed for Bushy, but she wants to do it now. Now the bids already came in, and now she wants to get the police input to see what they want. Uh, Roseanne thought that Dan's idea of making Kendall Dean primarily the school department building a, a new. Roseanne thought that Dan's idea of making Kendall Dean primarily the school department build a new separate police station and turn Bushy into the the municipal building, but the bond was not written that way. So already they were talking about, about building a new police station, saying that this one was inadequate. Dan's next best scenario is that Kendall Dean needs work, and Eric did not have them listed as priorities. Dan added these priorities as add alternates. Dan says all items at Kendall Dean need to be done to make it a 40-year building. Dan spoke, just bear with me, Dan spoke with the police department, and there are things that they would like to see happen that Eric did not do. Uh, once again, you think that input from the police department would come step one. Uh, Dan reduced the school, uh, reduced the scope. Roseanne did not want Eric, the architect, did not want Eric at the meeting this evening so that things could be ironed out before speaking with studio major. So you can see this, this disarray going on over here, and it's, uh, which is, goes back to why we ended up taking over. Uh, John asked, why were ad alternates added as alternates and not as primary work? Dan stated there are more important things that must be done to make Kendall Dean a 40-year building. Joe states that Dan is acting as a true owner's representative as opposed to studio major. Studio major hired by the council. Studio major was hired by the town council with no input from the PBIC. So they hired the, uh, they hired the studio major, but the people who were going to be working with studio major had no input on that. So John asked if the bond John asked if the board were willing to ask the council for surplus, which what Terry already pointed out. So basically uh, agreeing that the original bond was, was insufficient. And uh, Mr. Clifford's, uh, what he discussed was the bond matching the town's budget. But right here, uh, Mr. Flaherty is saying that the town, we, we want to go beyond the town's budget and we want to ask the, uh, the town council to give us more money. Uh, Jason brings up the limited life of Bushy School and that we would not count on possible surplus. But they still wanted to dump money into a building that they knew was not going to last. 
by Joe Fields. Joe Fields, a reduced scope with a 40 year lifespan to use the remainder of the bushy is the best route. So they wanted to just basically throw whatever was left from Kendall Dean into Bushy, even though it was a 10 year building, and pay for it for the next 20 years. But uh, this, this is a lot, I mean, the minutes, the minutes basically paint a picture that the, uh, it was a, a soup sandwich over there. And you know what happens when you have a soup sandwich? It's pretty messy. Uh, Dan states the bones of Bushy School are not good. There's a problem with the brick face of the building. If he cleans it up, the brick face will need to be repaired again. There are roof issues that cannot be done to bring Bushy to a 40 year building. Possibly in the future, a new metal building with a brick facade could be built in the future. Basically, again, admitting that the building is not worth fixing or putting money into. And, uh, Mr. Flaherty wants to know why no one talked about the usefulness of Bushy earlier, but Dan states that Eric did not want to hear it. It's his architect, not want to hear it, and no feasibility study was performed. Dan suggests to change, reduce scope. Dan suggests there, there, Dan suggests to change, reduce scope, the wording reduce scope to value engineering. Basically, he wants to change the verbiage to soften the blow to the taxpayer. So that's pretty much all I have. But my point is that these minutes, the only minutes that I could find in the last four meetings, the three after that don't exist, uh, put any money into Bushy at all would have been the real waste of taxpayer money. The project manager and the finance director also stated that it is not worth putting any money into Bushy School. So if anybody's advocating putting money into Bushy, you have to question uh, their knowledge and of, uh, you know, of this project. Putting any money into that school would have been a waste of money. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So can you just repeat the first quote you said about Bushy? There's kind of, there's, there's a couple sentences, but I don't want to paraphrase incorrectly. It's not, all right, give me a second. For yeah, it was like one of the first things you said. It was about paying for the bond more than you would for the money. Oh yeah, that was a uh, that was me paraphrasing uh, their their built their uh, project manager saying that uh, if we put any money in Bushy School, then we would be paying for we would be paying off that bond longer than we had longer than the usefulness of the building. So, and, so it's a ten year building. So we're going to be paying a twenty year bond. Well, I'm just, so what? Like, okay. I'm just curious. Of when was that quote made? Was that 2000? Was that when you were on the council? I don't. Uh, was it before? We, we, 16? Was that, uh, I don't have the. Uh, that, that, this, no, I'm just curious. Was that, that related to these minutes? I'm just trying to follow along. 1024 16. 24, 16. Okay. So, but the last council, the 2016 to 2018 council, if it felt that it inherited a mess, was it ever consideration or discussion to go back to the voters? I understand that we've delayed this project, but what's another year, right? We already wasted a year coming up with new space designs and conceptual plans. Why didn't we put together another package that we could have gone in front of the voters and said, Bushy's out. We're going just with Kendall Dean. We're not going to eat any more money on it. I, 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 that's the piece I also don't understand. Okay, let me, yeah, I'm just curious. I can explain it. Let me clarify something, John. It's a 10-year bond that we floated. The town floated the 10-year bond, it's not a 20-year bond. So like Mike shaking his head. I know that Mike gets a year bond. My mistake. Nobody on the task force has ever argued that we should borrow more money or we should spend more money. We've always lived within the dollars that were allocated by the town. We've never argued that the town should borrow more money. We did state though that all the three projects were underfunded. Twelve million dollars wasn't enough to do the three projects. The reason that we can't just stop and go back to the voters and say, oh wait, let's restart this thing, go back and redo it again, you already borrowed the $5.2 million. But it's just an authorization to borrow, it's no, not no, an actual no. product. Tom actually yes. borrowed the money. So we that's what, the fund? That's what created a problem when we did when we did a review of this and, and issued a report in October of 2018. In April of 2017, that was one of the issues. Had you not borrowed the money, the task force, I could almost guarantee you, would have said, stop everything, do nothing. 
but you already borrowed $5.2 million. Four months before you actually had any bids, they were open. You have to do something now. The money's sitting there, you've already borrowed it. You have an obligation now. That's what's creating some of this turmoil. You're already sitting on the pot of money. You borrowed it, you're paying the juice on it. No, I understand that. We're paying $4 million between principal and interest this year. That's what we budgeted. Well, part of it is for this, but that's that's for that's overall. That's you yeah, yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, but I'm just saying, saying, you borrowed that money. The town borrowed that money before they even had a bid, before they even put it on the street. They had to borrow the money. But my further, Mr. President, we explored that circumstance with our bond council, and I believe the cost that would have been uh, dropped on the town is something close to eight hundred thousand dollars if we had not gone forward with the project had to defeat the bonds and the cost to the town would have been on the order of eight hundred thousand dollars. So then why did we delay an extra year? If we're carrying interest payments on top of five point five million, why are we delaying the project? I'm just curious, that's all. You mean delaying the So when we fired the PBIC, but if I'm just following this timeline correctly, if we fired the PBIC because we felt oh, we cease and assisted them because we felt that their bids were not the budget did not reflect the bids that came in. Similar situation, the 900,000 floated out there for a budget, but just came in at 2.4 million. But in that time period, we fired essentially or released the uh, original architect of their obligation. We went from 2017 to 2018. 20, it was what, October of 2018 is when we authorized the contract. So there's delays of years here, and what I'm hearing is that we already drawn upon the money. I'm just trying to figure out the process here as to decision making as to why we just didn't go forward. If, if we had to do something, why, if the plans, it is just a disconnect, that's all. It took, you, re, you redid the whole scope of the project. I understand. And it took four months to just to go from finding out that you wanted to go and get bridging documents to do these 